the common complex life. It's common planets like Earth are common. Copernicus led the way. <coughs> <laughs> this suggests hold your horses. It suggests hold the phone, back up. Your notion is probably wrong. Uh, that that uh, that this. There's no substitute for data. Another way of detecting very quickly, and I appreciate your patience, uh, another way of just another couple of minutes, then we'll quit. Uh, another way, very promising way, the next way being used by uh, uh, the next generation of spacecraft. And NASA will be announcing the next series of discovery missions. I served on a review panel for NASA over the summer for the next set of uh, discovery missions, there are some beauties. I, I'm looking forward to seeing what they formally announce. Uh, but they, another is transits. That if the star you're looking at and the plane of the orbit of the planets around that star are in the same plane as which, you know, from your perspective, the observer on Earth, you will see the planet transit that star. Wouldn't that be neat? That requires, of course, that the plane and the line of sight from Earth Observer line up. But wouldn't it be cool to have one of those planets transit a star? Such as, what this, this is a painting, of course, it's not a CCD image. It's a painting of a, of a star with a planet transiting it. Uh, such transits have been found among stars which are observed to have wobbles they said, okay, uh, let's see if we can constrain the plane that the orbits are following. And uh, boom, a couple of occasions, the planets transit the star. What does it look like? It looks like this. Uh, it was detected from the ground first, and then Hubble turned its uh, magic to it. And what you're seeing here is time progressing to the right, and a magnet, normal magnitude of that star just assigned one. And the star's brightness is normal with one. So, as time was going on, Hubble was t collecting magnitude brightness information. Star, star's just there. Star, 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 bright, 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 whoa. And then the transit's over. So this, this that when the star went in front of that, when the planet went in front of the star, of course, that artistry suggested a moment ago, the total brightness of the star would dim. Well, what does the dimming provide you with? What does the dimming provide you with? Go ahead, wing it. Relative diameter. Diameter! Holy mackerel! Isn't that great? Whoa! Uh, it was a, you know the orbit, you know the orbit of that of that planet, you know how close it is to the star from the wobble data. Mm -hmm. Now that planet goes across and cuts one and a half, just over one and a half percent dimming. One and a half percent dimming of that star's light occurs. How how much of a diameter does that planet have? Pretty big. One and a half percent of the disk of the star. If it's a G2 star, do you know something about the size of the star? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, if the planet is 1.5% about, yeah. the size of the star, cha-ching, you know, you've got, you've got the Doppler data that gives you the mass, mm -hmm. the orbit, and now you've got its size. You've got its volume. Mass, volume, I think I heard it. That's the density. <laughs> You got density. <laughs> you got density. You got density of the planet. The density of the planet. Holy mackerel! You got the density of the planet. Are you capable of seeing the absorption spectrum? <laughs> yeah. And the next thing is, is that all? Is that all you can get? It's just the density of the planet? No. It's very good point. Notice that as the star is transited by this planet, some of the photons of light from the star go through the atmosphere. See this little annulus right there? Yeah. Some, of those, oh. some of the photons from the star have gone through the atmosphere of that planet. 
And astronomers, of course, smart, love. just love capture that. the photons <laughs> and say, some of you have been through the atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like there? Talk. Well, you know? well, you have ways. Talk. Talk. And uh, so the, those those photons have been through the have been through the atmosphere and convey information. They've been there. They're little spacecraft. They've been there. So uh, that's that's indeed what's being extracted is watching how the stars spectrum changes when no st no planet is in front of that star. Just take the star spectrum, and then take the star spectrum when the planet's there, and compare them. And mm -hmm. the difference would be the planet's atmosphere. Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. So there is a, a rise in carbon dioxide, right? The, it, the, the ones, of so course... So how that, would they know the difference between an early planet and a later planet? The, the kind of planet that's being measured here is a Jovian, very hot large gas giant, low, uh, very near to the star itself. And, uh, and so you can watch it every four days when it goes across. The, you can get a lot of data. As opposed to one like a Jupiter or an Earth, for example, that might go across every week. So here's the next thing. And here's something to look for. Remain healthy. <laughs> it will be worth it. <laughs> uh, the, a series of spacecraft are going to be uh, launched by NASA and the European Space Agency to do a succession of increasingly sophisticated measurements. Doppler is being done beautifully from the ground, as you've seen. These people are just brilliant. Next thing is the transit method that you just saw illustrated is now the uh, a method that's being employed by modest sized telescopes on the ground and will be used by the next generation, launched in about a year, of uh, NASA spacecraft that will monitor about 10,000 stars looking for transits of Earth sized or bigger planets. Once that inventory has been done on thousands of stars, the next leap will be a number of things, but here's one of them. The terrestrial planet finder. Terrestrial planet finder. And this is something worth waiting for because here's what happening. What will happen if the technology can be developed. The technology implied here is just... Inventories have been collected. Imagine that in, by 2015 there are 10, 15, 20,000 planets known. of which a small fraction of those are thought to be similar to Earth mass, similar to Earth-type distance, i.e. habitable as we would understand habitable. They will be targeted for close inspection by uh, the uh, terrestrial planet finder, which would be in a Lagrangian point uh, in orbit around the sun. What it will do is this. It will image it will image those planets. We know there are planets there, we know there are Earth-like planets, let's take a really good look at it. And you'll take an image of those planets. Now the image will not show you details on the surface. That is not the caliber of image. But what will happen is a point star will be present, but you will also see a point, and that point will be the planet that you're looking at. What will happen? Spectra will be acquired from that point, from that Earth-like planet. A spectrum of its atmosphere will be acquired, and key atmospheric constituents will be looked for. In conclusion, what would you look for if you were interested in life as we know it? Oxygen. Oxygen. Carbon. Molecular oxygen on this planet is solely due, with the exception of about 1% of the 20% that we've got with us in right now, is due to photosynthetic life. 